Um, good. Well, I say good. We'll see how it goes. It could be shit. Um, uh, my name's Dan. Uh, apparently, I'm grumpy. Uh, this looks reasonable. Um, look, before we start, can I just get a read on the room? Can you give me a cheer if you're a student? Ah, uh, Russell Howard. Um, uh, uh, good, so we have plenty in. Uh, your students down here, or do you just like the look? <laughs> you're, what, uh, you're on the end, what's your name? Ben. Pleased to meet you, Ben. Uh, were you university or school? University, well done. Where do you study? Essex. <laughs> university of Essex, I, I haven't heard of. Um, but that's more a reflection on me than your intelligence, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> It'll all be all right in the end. I haven't actually started yet. I'm just getting to meet Ben. The rest of you are on hold. Uh, <laughs> what do you study, Ben? Computer science. There it is. Of course you do. Um, and so I presume you don't have a girlfriend, Ben. You don't know. I'm afraid you have to work with the stereotypes that present themselves to you, ladies and gentlemen. Ben, it's an easy thing to find a girl if you need one. Uh, all you've got to do is wink more. <laughs> It works for anyone. This isn't just Ben. This is any of you, right? Who want to find any age? You want to find a girl? You just got to get yourself winking, because you can make anything sexy with a wink, right? I'll give you an example. Okay. Hello. Would you like to come back to mine and have some quiche? Not cool. <laughs> hey. How do you fancy coming back to mine? Having a bit of quiche? <laughs> yeah. Sexy quiche. <laughs> The only rule with this is you can't do it with something that's sexy in the first place or it just gets sinister, right? <laughs> you pay attention, Ben. You cannot go up to a girl and go, hey, fancy coming back to mine, having a bit of sex? No! <laughs> what are you going to do to me? I'm going to shove this quiche up your ass. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a comedian. Uh, I'll give a tip first, seeing as this seems to be predominantly students. This is a tip for all the students in the room and beyond. Uh, this is a tip I got from a student who was at university and knew he was going to drink too much, so he had a plan. He said the first week of university, the first place he was going to go was a builder's merchant yard to buy himself a traffic cone. <laughs> and then keep the receipt. So the next time he gets stopped in town by the police with one on his head, he can just turn around and go, uh, I think you'll find this is mine. <laughs> That's uh, something you can use for yourselves. Uh, I'm not a student, uh, as the more perceptive among you may have noticed, or if I am, that's a fuck of a lot of retakes. Um, <laughs> I'm not a student. I, uh, I'm a 30-year-old male, which I recommend being. Uh, the alternative is hideous. Um, <laughs> It's good to turn 30. It's fantastic because the pressure's off, basically. Once you get to 30, you've got no potential left. And that's incredibly refreshing. Nobody comes up to you anymore and goes, what are you going to be? Are you going to save the world? Is it going to be amazing? It's none of that. It's all gone. They just come up to you and go, is that it? <laughs> Which is nice because you can just go about your business, you know? There's... And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. When you're... Good God, Ben. And anyone, please have those hopes and think that the world's going to be amazing and you should build grand dreams, but you just have to be aware that they all come crashing down. <laughs> Nothing you think now will be good will ever be good. It's, it's, it's unremittingly bleak and reasonably shit. But as, as soon as you realise that, things work out. It doesn't matter where you live either. I, uh, I've lived all over. I lived for many years in the north of England uh, and then I had to move because of the people. <laughs> Well, they mean well, don't they? But sometimes that's just not enough. <laughs> so I, uh, I did move. This is about... About a year ago now, I moved, and now it's better. I've got ground floor accommodation, bit of garden, free range, room to peck and scratch. <laughs> but that came with other problems. People told me that London was an aggressive place to be. I didn't realise what that meant until last October, when I had my first London Halloween. <laughs> now... I used to enjoy Halloween as a time of year, you know, community coming together, having a good time. So I was excited about my first London Halloween. I was all prepared. Big tray of sweets. Plastic bat. <laughs> the doorbell rang at about eight o'clock in the evening. There was one kid stood there, right? No costume, right? He just looked up at me and went, you're gonna give me sweets or I'm gonna tell my dad you touched my dick. <laughs> 
welcome to London! <laughs> so seeing as he was going to tell his dad anyway... Um... <laughs> Slip a little pedo gag under the radar. I, I, I caused too much of a ruckus. But it's 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 worked out fine. I, I've found coping mechanisms. I find I find uh, well, I find alcohol to be the solution. Quite frankly, I have a, an uncomplicated relationship with alcohol in that it owns me. Um, but it's a wonderful solution, and it's part of being British. As British people, we don't actually interact with each other without alcohol. If you don't have a drop to drink, you just sat there going, oh, I like your hair, I like your books, and then, 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 and then, 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 kill me! It's just horrendous, you know? I had to have dinner with my neighbours the other week. Christ, I don't recommend you do that, tedious pricks. Oh, the main problem was they didn't give us enough to drink, right? I had two glasses of wine. Not enough! <laughs> you have two glasses of wine. That's actually a dangerous amount of alcohol because you think you're being interesting when you're actually being boring, right? <laughs> you have two glasses of wine. You start saying things like, OK, I'm just going to put this out there. <laughs> Who would you sleep with off the television? <laughs> Rather than having six glasses of wine and asking the questions everyone wants to know the answer to, like, who would you sleep with? in this room. <laughs> you have two glasses of wine, you get self-obsessed. You start saying things like, well, I'll tell you what my problems really are. <laughs> you have six glasses of wine, you're stood on the table going, I'll tell you what your fucking problem is. <laughs> it's a more vivid way of living, you know? And I hear all the arguments, people say, oh no, you're gonna behave badly, it's bad for society, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can set things up to protect yourself. I've got this. Technology is a wonderful thing. I've got this thing to help me with my behaviour when I've been drinking for free, right? It's a little programme that fits on my email. What it means is, after midnight every day, I have to solve five maths problems before I'm allowed to send an email. <laughs> to stop me getting in drunk and randomly abusing people in the middle of the night. It works a treat. And if nothing else, that is a reason to have a kid, isn't it? <laughs> Come and help Daddy with some maths. <laughs> Just got to tell Mummy's new boyfriend he's a bastard. <laughs> I don't know. I, I realise times are tough and uh, you've got to get it sorted out. And, uh, you know, Ben, a stable, a stable unit is useful. You should find yourself a partner sooner or later. I mean, through whatever means that are legal. I, uh, <laughs> you have to, don't you? I, last May, uh, I went down to the West Country for a week to try and find a wife. Yeah, I genuinely wish that was a joke. Um, <laughs> I, uh, as I said, I, I live in London, so um, I tried to sort it out here, but you, you, can't, you can't find a girl in London. I mean, you're just all these high maintenance, you know. Little bags, massive sunglasses, issues. <laughs> it's impossible, they're all into recycling and all that nonsense as well. I can't be doing with that. Oh, well, I've clearly picked the wrong crowd for the anti-recycling. <laughs> I get it. I understand. I know all the principles at work. I, I fully get it. I realise we're meant to be saving the world for these pricks. But <laughs> there's got to be... A, you shut up. There's got, to be, there's got to be a better way of doing it. That's all I'm saying. You know, just got, the methodology is wrong. It's not fair. Not every week. Every single week. You've got to put your sins outside your front door for everyone else to see, going, I did not drink all that myself. <laughs> I'm going up and down the street trying to put it in other people's boxes. <laughs> and they're all putting out organic vegetables, <laughs> soya milk. <laughs> I'm just putting out gym bottles and cat food tins. <laughs> you should have seen their faces when they found out I haven't even got a cat. <laughs> So I decided that what I needed to find was a low-maintenance woman. So I went to Cornwall. <laughs> because that's where they live. <laughs> Fantastic. They got this lust for life you can only have when you're part idiot, you know? <laughs> and no moisturiser for them, they just let the weather do its work. <laughs> This incredible hide that feels all knobbly <laughs> under your tongue. Oh, <laughs> <love it. laughs> all right, look, 
it's mostly a question of compatibility, right? You need someone you're going to work with long term. And I make loads of mistakes, so I need someone who'll cope with that. The kind of wife who, if I accidentally locked her outside the house for a week, <laughs> she'd still be there when I opened the door. <laughs> it doesn't matter, I made a bivouac. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't find a wife, um, which with hindsight may have been down to stereotyping issues, but it's quite hard to put your finger on those things. Two marvellous things happened when I was down there. I, uh, the first thing was at, at a small gig I was doing to offset the gloom, make 20 quid, you know, and uh, I was talking to these people about birthdays. I said, does anyone here know where the practice of blowing candles out on a birthday cake actually comes from? And they didn't know. They were all stumped. Going, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I deal. No, 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 no. <laughs> a man from the back of the room stood up to deliver his heckle and went, that is so you don't burn your face when you eat the cake. <laughs> that is quite something. <laughs> the only thing that topped that was on the way home, I was driving back to civilization. <laughs> and uh, I know what you're thinking. M5, M4. I took the 303. I guess I'm a dreamer. <laughs> I was going along the 303, and you go past Stonehenge, that's nice. But you go two, three minutes past there, there's something that is far better than that ancient monument, right? There's a little B road that comes off the side, and you, there's an area down there where you can go to pick fruit. And they have a large sign by the side of the road telling you you can do that. And somebody, my new hero, <laughs> has graffitied the sign. In large letters, they've written a swear word right across the middle of it. So now, the sign says, PICK YOUR OWN FUCKING STRAWBERRIES! <laughs> that is magnificent. You have to stop the car to do that. That is very impressive indeed. But you've got to sort it out, I suppose. But then... It's not actually a case that you do have to sort it out, you know? The whole industry of having children is just there to make money out of you, you know? That's all it is. It's just... I, I have these friends, and they just had a kid, and they bought this thing. Right. Now, when you get pregnant, you also get a little bit fat. <laughs> now, that's a nice thing. That's a good thing, right? Because you're eating for two, but sometimes the baby will be a fussy eater, so you put on the extra weight. <laughs> and then you have the baby. Nine months later, the baby comes out. And the... <laughs> very simple procedure. <laughs> they pretty much just walk down the uterus. <laughs> baby's gone, you're left with this little bit of extra weight. You want to get rid of that and get your shape back. Of course, but you have a problem. Because you don't want to go to the gym and leave the baby behind because it's new. You want to find out what it does. <laughs> and you can't take it running with you at that age. It's too young. That's not fair. That would be dragging. <laughs> so they've invented this new product. Sounds like the perfect today. It's about this high off the ground. It has handles like this and off-road wheels. It's an exercise pram. So you can go running and stay with your baby which sounds perfect, but with one major design flaw. That being that it's pretty much impossible to run with a pram without it looking like you've just nicked a baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've been Dan Atkinson. I will see you again. Cheers. Good night. <laughs>